Hi there, Phil Simborg from Chicago. It's Saturday night, uh, April 30th. We had our usual shoeette in Chicago today. Took many, many pictures, had a few bets, many, many arguments. Our typical fun day. And here are six positions that I think are interesting. Why don't you see how you would have done had you been in the shoeette? And you can always email me and let me know how you did. I would think it would be nice to see. Here we go. So the first position, blue to play 3-1. How would you play? It's a money game, blue on roll. And if you'd like more time, you can pause the video before you hear my answer and see Extreme Gammon's answer. I think the major fundamental question here is whether you come up with the back checker or not. How you play if you don't come up, there are a few possible plays there, but that's the first question to ask yourself. And I'm very happy to say I got this right. My opponent came up, which was wrong, and other good players thought it was right to come up, and it is wrong. Um, I must be tell you that I would not have gotten the right play. I would have made the second best play of making the three point, but that's still far better than coming up coming up put yourself under the gun uh, a lot of people come up because they think well I gotta escape that back checker uh, however um, red has three interboard points and blue has one with a blot when you come up and you're just inviting a hitting game uh, and you're invite you're giving blue the game he wants he wants to be in a hitting game he's gonna hit you most of the time and if he doesn't hit you which is what happened here uh, is I didn't hit because I couldn't uh, and still blue doesn't escape very often. After he comes up to here, he's got to roll an 8, a 6-2 or a 5-3 uh, to escape. And if he doesn't roll an 8, he's going to leave more shots later. As it turned out, he wasn't able to come out at all. But what happens is it turns out really isn't the answer. The point is it's wrong to come up in this position. What if blue already had the point made and he wasn't quite as vulnerable and it was a two-point board versus a three-point board. Look at the difference that makes. Now it's a little bit harder for red to attack. So that would have made the difference. And these little nuances are things you should do that would help you understand the concepts being involved in these positions. Let's go to the next one. Mark yourself a point if you got it right. By the way, I've only got five positions today. Okay, number two. This is a cube action problem. It's a redouble problem. Red is holding a two cube. Should red redouble and should blue take or pass if red redoubles? Again, pause the video if you need more time. Otherwise, I'll get right into it very shortly. Well, in this situation, red was the box. He did redouble. Uh, myself and one other player took and one other player dropped and the player who dropped was very very sad because very shortly I, it was the next roll after red rolled something innocuous and just came, brought his checkers in blue rolled a 1-6 proving that it was a take and uh, we were while we were congratulating ourselves and patting ourselves on the back and making fun of the guy who dropped red proceeded to roll a double five and still won the game and won the race. Uh, the point is, though, it wasn't even a double. It's an easy take. Looks very, very tough, but Red's got a lot of work. He's got three checkers to bring out. He crash, and it's not even a redouble by quite a bit. And I can see, again, why a human should redouble this, according to Extreme Gammon. If you can get a drop 20% of the time, it's you're making up for the mistake of the 11% blunder of redoubling if you can get a drop 20% of the time. Well, the, he got a drop 33% of the time. One of the three of us dropped, so uh, he really came out ahead by redoubling. Uh, I would guess that's one way to look at it. But uh, it's a tough take. I, I really must tell you I wasn't that tremendously confident myself. But there's a lot of numbers where red doesn't come out for a couple of rolls and maybe do some, doing some crashing, or blue has plenty of counterplay here. Next one, number three. 
Another cube action problem, this time an initial cube. Blue is on roll, should blue double, and if blue doubles, should red take or pass? Okay, I was the recipient of this cube, and I took this cube, and there's plenty of game left. It's just a small double, and again, some people uh, drop this cube. So you got to see there's pl still plenty of game here. Uh, there isn't a lot that points on red's checker on the two-point, and even if he gets hit loose on the two-point, he's got some chances to roll twos and fives and hit. Blue's got lots of work to do here. It's uh, it's a fairly easy, very, very easy take, but a bear double. But again, when in doubt, you might double because you might get some passes, and you could really almost flip a coin on whether to double. 0 0.046 is not much of a mistake to hold the cube here. Okay, number four. This is, again, it's a cube action problem. Blue is on roll. Let me make it bigger for you. I should have been doing that all along. But blue is on roll. Should blue double? And if blue double, should red take or pass? I've got to admit that this one fooled me. I did the wrong thing here. And what was the wrong thing? Doubling, not doubling, taking or passing? Well, it's right to double here, and it is very wrong to take. And I took this cube. And I just didn't see that Blue had that strong a game. But he does. He's very likely to hit with the two, and he's got points to make and he's up 24 pips in the race. Red has to anchor, get a shot, and hit it to try and win this game. That's just too much work. It's a big pass. I made a big mistake. Now I did honestly think that if you cleared, cleaned up this blot that would probably turn it into a take. Not close. Still a big pass. That's how bad Red's game is and how wrong I am and was about this position. And the good news is I can see now why I'm so wrong about this position, but I still need to study it a little bit more and engrave it so that I don't make the same kind of mistake again in positions like this. This is just too too much work and too tough for Red to pull this game out. It's just a drop. And of course, he does win around 30% of the time, but 30% gammons gives you a very, very big drop. So I blew this one. I got a lot more right, but I blew this one. Last one, number five. Ah, this one I got right. And was grossly ridiculed by a couple of my people. But that's what we do in Chicago. We don't discuss. We don't suggest. We ridicule. What's the right play here with the 6-5? You know, Joe Russell often gives me an interesting bet. He usually wants 10 to 1 odds, and I've given it to him a couple times, and sometimes he's right, sometimes he's wrong. More times than often, he's right. But he bets that he can name the first three plays in order. And uh, I usually am able to give him that. I would give him 10 to 1 odds on this. So, Joe Russell, if you're watching, you got to bet 10 to 1 odds that you can't get the first three plays in order here. Why don't you try that, too, and pause the video. See if you can come up with the first three plays in order. By the way, I don't think there's a lot of people who can get the first three plays in any order. Okay. I wanted to bring two down from the 13, slotting the bar, duplicating the sixes that hit and cover, and making this point I thought was well worth the risk, and that was the right play. And it was scoffed at, and they didn't even make the second best play which, by the way, these plays are bigger when you roll it out. I really did roll these out. <coughs> the second best play <coughs> was to run from the back checker. <coughs> what was made by my partners was this play, which is about a 5% error. Not, not a horrible, horrible blunder. But, and, I, and I didn't even mind that they disagreed with this play, but I was given such harsh... Ridicule. You mean you give lessons, Phil Snowboard? What kind of a person can you be and give lessons? Well, I make very, very big mistakes sometimes. 
but that's okay. So does everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you did well. Let me know how you did. And uh, good rolling to you. I am uh, Saturday, Monday. I'm going to L.A. for a week to do some teaching and be with some friends. And uh, I always combine the two. I'm teaching friends, by the way. Most of my students have become great friends, which is one of the greatest joys I have in being a teacher of this game. And for those of you who don't know me too well, I am one of the principals of the Backgammon Learning Center. We've got 15 teachers that teach in seven different languages on the internet and live all around the world. So if you're looking for lessons, and uh, we have a very, very low reasonable rate for beginners, could try and bring more people into the game, playing more tournament game. And of course, we have uh, our normal rates for more advanced players uh, who have taken lessons from us and won many, many tournaments all over the world. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.